What is up, everybody? It is Zach from App Premier Soccer Investing coming at you with yet another Slap Stocks FC YouTube video. Let's get into it. This was the craziest transfer window, at least since I've been watching football. So for the past 10 years, in my opinion, but probably of all time, you'd both Messi and Ronaldo switching clubs. Ronaldo going back to Manchester United, looking to really help them challenge for the title this year. That's going to be a cool story to watch. Really came about because of uh, a push from Sir Alex Ferguson as he looked like he was going to City for a while. And then United stepped in at the last minute and signed him. And you had Harry Kane staying at Tottenham, and that's been reflected. His prices have gone up, maybe because of it, maybe because of Tottenham doing well in the league so far. I don't know, but it seems like, I mean, I'm just happy he stayed as I'm a huge Tottenham fan. It would have sucked to lose him. And then Mbappe is staying at PSG, which I think is the right move for both PSG. So they're probably going to win the Champions League. Mbappe gets the Champions League, puts up huge numbers, gets to play with Messi and Real Madrid because they can take the 200 million euros they would have spent on him this summer and reinvested in that squad next summer to really effectively build a strong team around him. Because if they had spent that all this summer, they wouldn't have had money to pay. So next year, watch out for Madrid when they get Mbappe. And the Mbappe going, staying at PSG, it confirms that we're going to have the m and trio for a year. Messi, Mbappe, and Neymar, this is going to be so much fun to watch. So much attacking talent in that team. There's also other dudes too, Di Maria, Hakimi. They, got a, they really got a squad in Paris. And they're my pick to win the Champions League, and I'm sure they are for a lot of other people too. 18-year-old wonder kid from Rennes. Rennes had to sell me at a year left on his contract, and he wasn't signing an extension. And they were able to cash in on a player. They developed Camavinga as an absolute baller, center defensive mid, plays for the French national team already. Super, super good. So much potential, and he's going to be really fun to watch this year in Madrid and then probably moving forward with Mbappe too. And then I like this signing from Tottenham, we, signing – Emerson Royale, the right back from Barcelona, which this signing really is indicative of how terrible Barcelona's finances are because they signed this guy 30 days ago and they're already flipping him for money, just how desperate their cash situation really is. Their club president literally said he has a 300 million euro release clause. We hope to keep him for a long, long time and they end up selling him to Tottenham for 30 million euros. He's an attacking right back, which we needed as Tanganga. At right back is more of a defensive player, which is really good against the big teams, but against smaller teams, we need that attacking strength to come, and he's he'll get, he's going to provide it, and he's going to help Tottenham make that top four challenge, which would be big for a lot of players on their team like Harry Kane, Hung Min Sung, many others. De La Ali is having a bounce back year so far too, and then this was a bit of a perplexing signing in my opinion from Barcelona, signing uh, the Sevilla striker Luke De Jong. He's kind of a stiff. He's really just a hold up number nine, score goals with headers. That's about it. Not very fast. He's similar to Braithwaite, but Braithwaite has more quality. So I don't understand the purpose of signing him. You're signing a, I guess, the backup Braithwaite, but I don't think this moves the needle. And Barcelona's a, a league of title chances, and they're still definitely not the favorites. And the favorites are at let it go for now especially since because of the turns they made, which I'll get to a little bit later. Chelsea further consolidating their position as the, the obvious team to beat in the Premier League, signing the silky smooth midfielder Saul from Atletico on loan with an option to buy. He has a, he's a player with a ton of quality, a ton of technical ability, great passer of the ball, could beat people off the dribble, and he has goals in him too. He should slot right into Chelsea starting eleven. For probably Jorginho, or at least you take over Kovacic's ro his role as the player off the bench. Chelsea's squad is so deep now at this point. They have so much quality at every position, and it really, I think, would be a surprise if anyone but them doesn't win the Premier League. Unless Lukaku goes down, they get hit with injuries in other key positions like Conte, Mendy going down too, then they could be in trouble. But if everyone stays fit, Chelsea's should be the favorites to win the Premier League, and I think they're going to be able to do that. And so that creates a lot of buying opportunity for a guy like 
Lukaku, a Pulisic, all these like prospects and hyped up players on their team. Because if they win the Premier League, what's that going to do to their prices? That's one to watch uh, as we move forward in this season. And then this was a really good signing from RB likes of signing. Ars one of Barcelona's most talented youngsters, uh, La Masia product, Ilax Moriba, on like a 20-ish million euro transfer, transfer fee. He's a center midfielder slash he can play in the wing too. Only 18 years old, tons of quality. And look, he's already built like a grown man. He has a ton of pace, technical abilities there. He can really pass the ball, of course, as he came out of La Masia. And while I don't think this fully replaces the loss of Marcel Sabitzer, this was a good signing from Leipzig to offset some of what they're going to be losing uh, by getting rid of him. And then we got Antoine Griezmann going back to Atletico. And man, a Barcelona lost a ton of money on this deal. It, he was a 110, 120 million euro signing. They're sending him back out on loan to Atletico for with an obligation, or I think obligation, it might be an option to buy for 40 million euros. Griezmann, obviously an Atleti legend. This further cements their position as the favorites uh, to repeat as La Liga champions. Uh, Griezmann, obviously a great, great player. You still have Felix if he can ever get his act together, which I'm going to talk about to close out this video. Still have Diego Simeone, one of the best defenses in the world. They're always a super tough team to play against. And, yeah, that's a, that's a really strong team right here. Now, since we're in the first international break of the season, I thought it would be a good time to look at how – all the top five leagues are going. Right now, you have Wolfsburg winning the Bundesliga, only team to win three from three. And then Leverkusen's in second with their huge goal differential, plus seven, behind what could be what, behind the Mercurio, amazingly talented Florian Verts in what could be his last season there as he looks to drag him either into a title race or back into Champions League football. Bayern Munich, obviously, in third. They're obviously going to be a factor throughout the uh, Bundesliga season, and they should be the favorites to win the title. Freiburg are surprised down in fourth. Same level points as Bayern and Leverkusen, and then Dortmund in uh, fifth. Holland, Reina, they have talent, just their lack of ability in the back line is what's doomed them the past couple of years and what's probably going to continue to doom them this year. And then moving over to uh, Serie A, only two games have been played in this season. But Roma's one of the teams looking really, really good so far. Tammy Abraham has been a revelation for them. He's looking like a great signing. Inter still wants to be – still looking to be a factor to defend their title. Lazio's back. If AC Milano was in the title race all season, last season on six points. Napoli, two is always up there. And the big thing from this is no Juventus. I, they're, they're at – they only have one point. They're down in a tie for like 13th place in Serie A. It could be a really long season for the Bianconeri. Luzi Ronaldo, not really replacing it with anyone great. Moise Keane, but he's nothing special. And it's it could be a tough season for them. They're going to be in a scrap to just make the Champions League, let alone challenge for Serie A. Moving on to the French League, PSG. Four wins from four, no surprise there. Messi finally made his debut for them. He was only on the pitch for about 25 minutes, yet was the most valid player on the pitch. That team, if they don't steamwalk, steamroll through League One, something's wrong there. And then Marseille looking to qualify for the Champions League behind the likes of Conrad De La Fuente. They've had a decent start to their season, seven points in three games. They win their game in hand. They move uh, into probably third in the table over to La Liga. The six teams that really are factoring right now, Mallorca, who just signed the American, Ethan Hoppe, and they're owned by an American owners too, so you know they're going to want to feature him a lot. He's going to be a, he's going to be one to watch there. They, I think, Takafisa Kubo's on that team too. Atletico, who I think is the favorite to win La Liga. You have Barcelona. I think they'll eventually fade, though. I wanted to mention this earlier, but with Emerson leaving Barcelona, that's a meant Serginio Dest as the week in and week out right back there. 
which is good for all us U.S. men's national team fans up there. Valencia seven and three. Sevilla, they think they have a shot to win the title, which was behind their thinking of signing like Eric Lamella from Tottenham. They have an old team who really looks to take advantage of Barcelona, Real Madrid being weaker than they normally are to really challenge, and the Madrid in first with so far with the most goals scored and seven points. And then over to the Premier League. This is amazing viewing for me. If Tottenham, the only team to win all three games so far, top of the league. But what's honestly even better is Arsenal down at the bottom. No goal score, nine goals given up, three losses. And the Amazon Prime documentary is filming all of it. It is going to be a really long season for Arsenal. This squad is not good enough. Arteta is not a good manager. And they're looking like they're going to keep him for a while longer. I really don't think it's out of the question that Arsenal is going to be remaining in a relegation scrap all year long. But again, Chelsea is probably going to be the team to lead the Premier League once more games are played. West Ham's look really strong, though. Liverpool has looked okay. United's uh, down in like sixth or seventh, but they're going to be a factor in the title race too. And then City, of course, also. And then this is good news for the U.S. men's national team. Really talented uh, 18-year-old forward for FC Dallas, Ricardo Pepe, has committed to playing for the U.S. moving forward, not for Mexico. If you don't know about him, he's been banging in goals this season. Is an MLS All-Star, scored the winning goal for the MLS All-Star team to beat the Liga MX All-Stars. He's probably going to get a move to Europe sometime in the next year or two. And he's a really good striker prospect to watch, which is good for the U.S. because they still don't have a set number nine yet. There's a lot of dudes competing for it, but no one has truly, truly stood out yet. So maybe he could be the one to grab that position by the scruff of its neck. And then also the U.S. released the roster for the these three World Cup qualifying games for this week. It's three games in seven days. Tyler Adams was saying today that their goal is to win nine points, which it should be. But the key news is Pulisic is fit, back from COVID and good to go. You have Reyna, Sargent, away had to be dropped from the squad with an injury. De La Fuente, Brendan Harrison has been really good. P. Falk, Adams, Acosta, Legette, McKenney, Rodan in the midfield. And then George Bello, John Brooks, Serginho Des, Mark McKenzie, Tim Ream, Antonio Robinson, Miles Robinson, James Sands, Yedlin, and Zimmerman in the goal. Horvath, Stefan, and Turner. I think for this team, they're the best lineup for this roster. You have Stefan in goal. You have uh, Antonio Robinson at left back. John Brooks and Miles Robinson center back. Serginho Des on the right. And then Acosta, Adams, and McKenney in the midfield with uh, Sergeant Reyna and Pulisic up top. And then like Anderson is the first player off the bench to contribute to that attack. Well, if you need a goal or if you don't need a goal, he's too good to leave off the field for 90 minutes. And we had a huge, huge sale in the soccer card market this week. The Erling Holland top spy super refractor 101 BGS 9.5 sold for $205,200 at golden auctions showing the strength in the high end soccer market and the high end Holland market is still there. People are still really high on him. They believe in soccer. So you can tell by the amount of money that was placed down on this. And yeah, it's always good to see some six figure sales coming out of the soccer market. And there's probably going to be more to come too in the coming months and years. And then last thing I want to end it with this week is uh, talk about Jao Felix. I think he's the might is one of the biggest losers from this transfer deadline because he really wanted to move out of Atletico Madrid. And there was rumors of him being a part of a swap deal to go to Barcelona. And Griezmann goes the other way, and it fell through. And as you can see, his prices have dropped tremendously, seventy eight percent down in the last three months. Lost six hundred thirty three dollars in value. You see the light slight uptick in the past week because people thought he might be leaving Atletico. But I expect that to go right back down now that the news is confirmed he's staying there. He just has not fit into a, a Simeone team, doesn't defend well enough. And, yeah, it's just been really a huge waste of promise in town so far. And that's probably going to continue as long as he stays at Atletico. So if you believe he's going to get a move in the next year, there could be some buying opportunities going forward for Felix if he can rediscover his Benfica form. But if not, he might be one of those wonder kids who didn't fully live up to their potential yeah that's gonna be it for this week as always like comment subscribe 
DM if you got any questions. Thanks for watching and peace.